Welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast with Jacob Ayers, providing actionable content to help you along your journey to financial freedom through real estate investing. As the premier asset class, real estate has helped ordinary people just like you amass fortunes. The benefits of passive income from real estate investing will allow you to live a life you want. And now your host, entrepreneur, real estate investor, and apartment deal syndicator, Jacob Ayers. Hi, and welcome to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, episode 314. Welcome back. Hey, I'm so glad you're here today. Today, we're going to be talking about the CARES Act and how it has recently impacted real estate investors just like you. Yeah, if you read the news or listen to the news, you know some of the high-level details, maybe the $1,200 stimulus check and things like that. But what you may not know is how it has given you access to some money you may not have realized. That's why we're bringing on today's guest for the third time, Damian Lupo. Damian is the expert in this field, so I'm excited to have him on the show, ask him all of these new questions, and bring that value to you. So let's go ahead and jump into this week's episode with Damian Lupo. All right, today, welcome back on the show for the third time, which I think may be a record, Mr. Damian Lupo. Damian, hey, thanks so much for coming back. It's good to be back. We were talking earlier. It's kind of funny when you're coming back. It's like, did you not get it right the first two times? But <laughs> you know, things change. We were in a totally different environment than we were last year. So it's kind of exciting to bring back and come in with new things that are really relevant that can potentially change people's lives. So I think we're going to do that today. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, for the audience members that may not know you, Damien, I suggest you go back and listen to episode 52 and episode 246 that you've been on the podcast here. But just give us a quick rundown of who you are and what you do. So I'm basically the guy that just can't get it right the first 50 times. I'm, and I say that I'm kind of laughing. It's, I've started 50 companies and have been a professional real estate investor for the last 20 years. And what's happened over the years is I realized that where most people are afraid of or hesitant to make decisions because they don't want to have the mistakes or the pain or the blood or the losses. I just realized that's what makes us wealthier. And so I just did a lot more than most people. And it, what I can tell you from all that experience is that it calms everything down because you realize you're not going to die by making a mistake. Even, and I've lost all my money three times. And so even in those experiences, what has happened is I just got clearer and clearer that the journey of growth was about taking action and betting on my beliefs. And so the difference between like an entrepreneur and an academic, and most people have been trained to be academics. We think about things, we go to school, we, we memorize things. And then an entrepreneur or an investor actually bets on what the heck they believe in. They put money down and then they adapt. So it's, it's kind of funny. I just got really good at betting on things and trying. And so now what I've got is decades of experience where I can look around the corner and give people some tools and some ideas based on a whole lot of blood and tears and mud. And it's a different world when you can actually have that kind of person in your life. And we all need that. We all need balder, grayer people than us that can look at our stuff and go, yeah, here's where you're going. And you go, wow, how do you know? Because I've been there. Yeah, absolutely. Damien, you're one of the people I look up to and one of these out-of-the-box thinkers when I'm wondering maybe what's going on in the world. You always have the answer, so it seems. So I love having a friend like you that I'm able to call up, rely on. You know, Let's just take today's subject of you know the updates with this recent CARES Act, right? Like, there's all this news out there, you know, of what's coming with the CARES Act. Many people know of, you know, the $1,200 recent stimulus check and things like that. But there's actually much more involved. So I love having someone like you who just seems to be always in touch with what's going on. And I want to bring that value to the audience members today. So let's kind of dive into that and tell us, you know, a little bit about what this recent CARES Act entailed for the most people. Well, first off, let's talk about the media for just a second, because the media got everybody all wound up about the PPP and about businesses getting money. And that really doesn't have anything to do with most of us. The average person it won't have any impact whether or not Boeing gets $14 billion or $52 billion or any of that stuff or Shake Shack yeah. gets $10 million. Like, who gives a crap? What we care about is, is this going to actually help me with my life with the impact that Corona has had on my family? And where, they, where Congress did some changes to the retirement system, that actually has a huge impact. And so what they did is they said, okay, out of this $2 trillion, $2.2 trillion spending spree, this like freaking spending orgy that they did, 
there's an earmark there where they change the rules and you're allowed to pull money out of your retirement accounts and you can get up to $200,000. So what they did is they said, there's two options here. You can do one thing, which is called a disbursement where you pull up to a hundred grand out. And this can be any retirement account, including a place where you're currently working. So it could be an IRA, it could be a 401k, it could be an EQRP. It could be, if you're working for the government right now and you have a thrift savings plan, you can pull a hundred thousand dollars out of that thing. and you got a couple options. So you could take it and you could roll it into an EQRP where you have control of it. You could take it and spend it on a boat. You could take it and do whatever you want with it. And you have a couple of options of either moving it into something or just keeping it. And if you keep it, you don't have to pay taxes all at once. In fact, you get to split it up over three years. And again, this is new because normally if you take any money out at all before you're 60, before you're 59 and a half, there's a 10% penalty. So there's no penalty. And if you just rolled it over, so here's the biggest, biggest takeaway. If you've got money stuck in a plan that you're working at right now, like the government or private company, for the first time in history, you're able to take $100,000 and actually start controlling it while you're still working there. You can take it out and then move it into a self-directed type of plan. And there's no tax or penalty. Like the coolest thing that Congress has ever mistakenly done. I don't even think they realized they just did it, but they did do it. And so now we have options. And that was just the first one. I mean, there's another option for another 100,000, but this one is the thing that can change the game because instead of being stuck in Wall Street scams, you can actually get your money, at least 100 grand of it or whatever you have in there up to 100 grand and move it into a, an account that you have control of. I mean, being able to go and do real estate, being able to invest in companies that you can actually talk to the owners versus some random company on the Fortune 500, like it's a very different world when you actually control your money. So that was the first one. Yeah, that's great. And it's a huge thing for, you know, your average day person who's working in a job, maybe investing in a 401k or 403b or, you know, any of those number of retirement plans. But what it really does for people is allows them to, like you said, take control of that money. And why do you think the government accidentally did this? Is there any kind of incentive for them to do that? Or was it just a byproduct of the broader CARES Act in general? What the government was trying to do was to prevent a depression because depressions are deflationary. Depressions create civil unrest. They're figuring out anything. It's a damn fire hose. They have quantitative infinity. What that means is the Federal Reserve (laughs) is basically saying, okay, we're going to print until, well, way past the cows coming home. It's going to be forever. And so Congress said, well, we're just going to spend forever and we can borrow the money because who cares? And that literally, the CARES Act was like, who cares how we're going to pay it back? That's what it really (laughs) meant. And ultimately, you've got a whole lot more money flowing around in the economy. Where that money goes, mostly it's going to go to the top one tenth of 1%. Let's just be honest. That's where it's going to end up. And that's whatever it is, what it is. So what the question is, how do you benefit? How do you take control of your life? How do you do something of use? Because most people have had an impact and they're like, well, I need money. Well, 1200 bucks isn't going to cut it. 1200 bucks is like, you know, half of most people's rent or their mortgage. And it doesn't really move the needle. It's kind of like life support. It's kind of like being, you know, you're getting a shot of morphine. That's what $1,200 is. It right. is not the, it's not the right food. It's not the right shelter. It's just, it's a temporary patch. The retirement money, $100,000, it wasn't meant to give you control of your money and to be able to go out and invest. What it was meant to do was give you access to money in case you needed it for whatever, because they wanted to push a whole bunch of money into the economy. I mean, our, the economy contracted like 25, 30% in the last three months. That we're, the GDP, I mean, we're shrinking. This has never happened before. The unemployment is almost 40 million people. Yeah, that, that's I mean, these, insane. These numbers are crazy. So what does this do? It gives, when you push money into the economy, people start doing things. What they're not doing is they're not traveling. They're not going to hotels. So where's this money going to go? Probably for housing and food. And I mean, mostly we don't have any other options. Maybe a whole lot of clicking and buying crap on Amazon, but who knows? It, the point of it was to get money into people's hands for survival, to keep them calm and fed. Like th- that's really what this was all about. Yeah, sure. Now you're saying that, you know, that $1,200 was, you know, just not really a blip on the radar in the grand scheme of things, but for the average person to be able to take advantage of some broader things, they can tap into their retirement account, right? And they can take control of that through a few different ways. You touched on one of those is the disbursement. You can take out up to $100,000 penalty free, which saves you 10% right there. And now what can one do with the money? You said they can go buy a boat, reinvest it, put into something else. What are the repayment options there? 
So you've got the option of either rolling it into another retirement account and you've got three years to do that. Well, if you're going to roll it and start self-directing, you may as well do it the week after you get the money. So that's one option. And if you're going to pay it back, like if you're going to roll it, you got the three years. The other, and that's only available for, actually that's available for every retirement account, unless your company says, no, we don't think you should have it. So you might have to have a conversation with your administrator and say, well, I think I should have it, but it's up to companies. An EQRP or an IRA, those are all eligible. So if you're in the thrift savings plan, we know 100% of those are eligible for up to 100,000. The other one is the loan. So you're able to do a loan if you have a 401k or, or an EQRP. The, the $100,000 that you can borrow out of there, no payments for 2020. And then you've got five years after you start paying, which is a year from when you take it out to pay it off. And it's equal payments. So that's another option, not available for IRAs. However, you could take an IRA and convert it to an EQRP, at which point you could then borrow another $100,000. So realistically, if you've got an IRA, an EQRP, a thrift savings plan, you can take a $100,000 disbursement. You can take a $100,000 loan. You've got options for a whole big pile of money. And it's kind of fascinating because if you take that money and you go and let's say you buy some property, we've got some rules right now with investment property where you can get big depreciation, like bonus depreciation. And so that depreciation could potentially offset any taxes from you taking the money out and keeping it. Meaning you could potentially get all your retirement money. If you had a couple of hundred thousand, you could potentially get it all, keep it all, turn it into cash flow, and not pay taxes at all. Like there are some opportunities now. And these expire, Jacob. They expire at the end of the year for the disbursement. Can't do it after that. And the loan is only available for four more months until September. So okay. these are, it's like one of those things for a limited time. This is truly a limited time. Like this is going to go away. Right. So, Damien, what are some reasons one would consider rolling over their 401k into another qualified retirement plan? So, the, the reason to do it is because you have different options. When you roll over a thrift savings account, a thrift savings plan account or a 401k that you've had from somewhere, a 457 or a 403b if you're a police officer, firefighter, teacher. If you have any of those, the reason you roll it over is because you happen to believe like me that Wall Street is not your best friend, that they're going to be raping and pillaging you until you're dead. And the truth is you're going to be better off if you actually control your money. If you can go out there, not only control it for investing, but I mean, you can do things like you can borrow money and invest in yourself, masterminds, mentors, educational programs. I can tell you that in my experience and anybody that has, well, the lack of hair like I do that has been through a lot of crap, <laughs> you know that the best investment you'll ever make is in yourself. It's not in a piece of property or a stock or a business. It's truly in you. So if you have access to resources where you can actually go and leverage off of other people's experiences, that is amazing. So that's, I think that's what we should really be thinking about. How can we get to capital and invest in ourselves because the opportunities are going to be breathtaking over the next couple of years. Yeah, 100% sure. certainty. Well, Damien, maybe somebody sitting right now and has taken a recent look, ill-advised, although it may be, at their 401k account and said, well, hey, clearly, you know, this investing in the stock market thing is a little too volatile for me. It's, you know, I have no control over things, right? A global pandemic can hit and my account balance is wiped out by 50%. I want to move my money, Damien, but Right now, my account balance is 50% of what it was just a few short months ago. What's one to do in a scenario like that? There's a reality thinking that takes place. What we can find is there's a cognitive bias towards losses, meaning we'll say, okay, well, I've had losses or it's down, so I'm going to wait until it comes back. Yeah. And it's really fascinating because we'll hear the same thing. Well, it's up, so I don't want to stop letting it go. What's happened is you're buying into Wall Street's nonsense that says you should always keep your money there because you're literally convincing yourself to keep your money when it's down or when it's up in that system so that you can be feed to death until your death. If you listen or you look up John Bogle, the founder of Vanguard, right. he said, there's some problem with a system when the people putting in the party, putting in the money, which is you into your retirement accounts or your brokerage accounts, puts up all the risk, has all the risk, puts up all the capital and ends up with 20% of the return. That means that Wall Street is getting 80% of the return. So ultimately the question is, why would you take on all this risk and why would you keep it there if you're getting 20% of the return and they're getting 80%? Like it doesn't even make any sense. I don't care if it's up or down or left or right. It's just dumb. Maybe someone's thinking, Damien, well, I don't know what to do with my money, right? Wall Street, you know, these mutual funds, these guys know what they're doing, although maybe the numbers don't prove that. I would have no idea what to do with my money. Now, the listeners of this show probably are not in that camp because, you know, they're listening to this podcast, obviously, right? But 
What about someone like that? I think you just have to ask yourself, who cares about my money more than me? And the answer is nobody. I mean, they care about keeping your money, but do they care about growing it and protecting it? Not really, because what's going to happen? They're going to make money no matter what. Market falls, they're stupid, they're reckless, they gamble. All that's going to happen is they're going to get rich and you're going to get old. So the question is, what's better for you? Invest in yourself, invest in time and energy. And you know, I see a lot of people, unfortunately, that will say, you know, I'm really busy and I just don't have the time. I'm like, well, you're going to wake up one day and wish you'd made the time. It's kind of like health. If you don't do something, if you just say, well, I'm just, I don't have time, I'm going to eat Burger King every day, not to pick on Burger King, but any, <laughs> anything that's not really you know, healthy for you, you're going to wake up and make the time because you're going to be in the hospital. So the question is, when are you going to do the time, now or later? And with investing, your best friend is time. It's not, I'm going to try to get it all done in the next five years because you're going to force bad things and it's called forced errors. If you've ever watched tennis, there's a forced error thing where you force an error. And that's what happens in investing where people, instead of allowing seasons to naturally grow things, they go out there and they push them and that force creates a disaster. So right now is a great time to start that thing. It's like the old proverb, best time to grow a tree, start it 20 years ago. Next best time today. Yeah, I love it. Well, Damien, you've probably heard this at least hundreds, if not thousands of times, but that is the point around the employer match or the common employer match on a 401k. One might think, well, hey, you know, I'm getting a match dollar for dollar up to three, five, six, eight percent, whatever it is, based on your employer. I don't want to lose that. What's your take around that? It's like crack. Like it's really appealing. And it's like, okay, cool. I'm gonna get five thousand dollars of free money. Think of it this way. You have to trap five thousand dollars of your money for the next forever. And it's why are you doing that? And the problem is you don't really have any control. Like, yes, you can pick one of the five mutual funds or the 15 or whatever, but ultimately your money's stuck in a system. And I can tell you from my experience, if you go out there uneducated, I mean, I started off with a high school diploma and I borrowed money off of a visa card to go buy a house because I watched some infomercial and I went and did it. And that thing turned into a $20 million portfolio because I was out there hustling. I just did the work. And I know it's a four letter word. So a lot of people are like, oh, work, terrible. I don't want to do work. (laughs) So they just hand their money over and then they say, well, let me do it. But you've got to decide if you care about your financial future enough to actually do the work and whether you want a life by design or whether you want a life by default. I mean, that's what it comes down to because you're going to have a default life unless you engage it. It's not going to happen for you. It's going to happen to you. Absolutely love that. The tagline of this podcast is engineer the lifestyle you want. That goes hand in hand with what you're talking about there. That's it. I mean, and it's all a choice. We have to really all think about this, that we have choices. You can be a victim. You can take responsibility. Our system and our entire society has basically built a bunch of crybabies, a bunch of weak crybabies that say, well, it was their fault. It was this fault. It was his fault or her fault. You know, it's depressing to see that. And it's okay. It's their fault. And I'm entitled to everything. Let me tell you, you're not entitled to anything. You're entitled to a fair playing ground where you get to play and do what you want. That beyond that, I don't think you're entitled to anything. I think when people say things like, well, I should be able to do this and I should have these resources, I'm like, according to who? If you think you're entitled to it, then you got to take it from somebody else. So what makes you more important than them? So I just think that we've got to reframe and ultimately decide what we can focus on that we can control because we can bitch and moan about stuff, but what can we actually do about it? It's like, oh, I'm really upset that that Boeing took $50 billion. You can't do anything about it. What you can do is say, what can I do with my retirement account now that set me free to break my own shackles so that I never am reliant on the system, that I'm never going, can I get another $1,200? Can I get $600 a week? I mean, the amount of people right now that are saying, this is really great. I don't want to go back to work because I'm making $4,000 a month from the state and federal government. Y'all are a bunch (laughs) of, makes me crazy. For you guys to do that, and to get addicted to it does not serve anything. Doesn't serve your family, doesn't serve society. It's the wrong thing to do. And so right now we should be thinking about what can we do that we can actually benefit everybody. And I think we need to ask different questions. So that's my take on this whole thing. There's my rant for you. I love it. Yeah, that's good. You know, taking control of your financial future is such an important thing that one can do. And that's kind of the premise of what you've designed the EQRP around. So tell us about how one can, you know, invest in the things that they are interested in and the things that they want to rather than, you know, keeping it tied up in a 401k or an IRA, being able to pick from a list of mutual funds, essentially. So basically the system is set up to give you choices, A, B, C, D, or E. Mm -hmm. And what that means is you get a retirement account and you get these five choices and they say, okay, pick one of these mutual funds. And then if you have an IRA, you might have some other options, but you still have people blocking you. You've got a custodian and you've got these rules and you really don't have total control. 
So the alternative is the EQRP. It's an enhanced qualified retirement plan. It's a unique thing where you actually have control of your money. And this is for you if you are by yourself, if you have a, a side business or a full-time business, if you have employees, it doesn't really matter what your situation is. But it's the only thing of its kind where no matter what your situation is, it actually works to give you control of your money and be able to invest in real estate, being a banker, meaning you get to loan money out. I mean, having mailbox money when somebody owes you money versus you owing is very cool. You can buy physical gold and silver. You can buy coffee farms in, in Panama. Like really whatever you want to do, you have options and it puts you in the driver's seat versus being in the damn trunk where you have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so then you're probably going off a cliff. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Damien. So, you know, if someone is wanting to, you know, take control of their financial future and decide that they're going to use this EQRP as a vehicle, maybe they have a 401k or an IRA, they can do the rollover, or if they have business income, they can contribute to the EQRP. Those are the essentially the two ways to fund the EQRP. Is that right? Yeah, really the two things are either rollovers and it can be unlimited amounts of rollovers and all these different orphan accounts that we have from previous employers. It could be IRAs that you've got that you've been putting money in. If you have a choice between an EQRP and an IRA, unless you absolutely are in love or like the custodian is your cousin and you're going to ruin Christmas if you leave, I think it's, <laughs> it makes sense to move your money into your control. And then you can put up to $57,000 per year per person. So like if you have a couple in a household, you're talking over $100,000 a year with an IRA, 6,000 bucks. I mean, you think about putting $6,000 into something over 20 years. Are you rich? No, nah, you're just old. Like there's an, a better, <laughs> better choice. Get all that money in there, get it working, be in control of it, get it to, to convert it to Roth. And Roth is the ultimate tool inside of an EQRP where you don't pay taxes even when you pull the money out. So there's ways to get money in there, not pay taxes when you put it in, not pay taxes when you convert it to Roth, not pay taxes when you pull it out. And right now people are like, well, I liked Hillary Clinton in that, at that debate that we had and in 2016. And, and she said that Donald Trump's a bad man and he said he's smart. Well, the tax code is set up to not pay taxes if you do the things the government wants you to do. And what they want you to do is have enough wealth when you're retired so you're not relying on them. Just think about it. The government has all these incentives and these idiot people in the media that call people out like Jared Kushner and say, depreciation loopholes are bad. That's a tax loophole. And I'm going, have you ever seen what the government does when they try to build something? They're terrible. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. We need these things. It's called an incentive program. The whole tax code is incentives. It's not about taxes. It's about getting people to do certain behaviors because the government knows it's incompetent. I certainly would not want the government in control over constructing my residence. Damien, I'm sure many others agree. But you brought up a good question I want to dig into, and that's one many people ask themselves. Do I fund a retirement account via Roth or a traditional aspect? What's your take there? Is one better for a certain type of person than the other? What's your take? Yeah, our system is telling us to do traditional because we get a tax right off right now, and they say, that's great. And then when you retire, you can retire broke, because, and you're going to be in a low, and I'm being serious, because what do they say? You're going to be in a lower tax bracket when you get older, because you're not going to have a house payment. Like this is conventional nonsense. It's not conventional wisdom. It's conventional idiocy. And so when you think about getting older, do you want to retire with income of thirty or $40,000 a year? No, you want to retire with hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a year. What's that going to do? It's going to put you in the top tax bracket. My friend Tom Wheelwright says, why would you do that to yourself where you're investing in things that you should be getting at worst capital gains treatment? And instead, what I mean is if you invest in stocks, bonds, real estate, whatever, personally, and then you sell them after a year, it's a capital gains rate, 15 right. to 20% typically. And if you buy something and sell it, say the same year, you're getting its ordinary income tax. So typically long-term assets, it's tax advantageous. Well, with retirement accounts, if you get all these tax deductions because you're putting money in and then you start pulling money out when you're 60, that's ordinary income. That is dumb. What you should do instead is consider the Roth where you get your money either directly in as Roth money. Roth is after tax. So right. basically, once that money's in, it's never being taxed again. So you get this money in there. And then when you're 60 years old or earlier, because any money that you've put in that's Roth, you can take out anytime you want, tax-free, penalty-free. Most people don't know that. You can totally pull it out. And then you can take all the gains in there, pull that out tax-free, penalty-free when you're 59 and a half. Why would you pay taxes knowing all this stuff? Like It's literally the dumbest thing on earth to go pay taxes because it's not required. And it's not. It's, there's a difference between tax evasion and tax avoidance. Tax avoidance is totally legal. It's what people do. It's what the tax code was written for, tax avoidance. It's called do the things the government wants you to do. 
Tax evasion is where you hide the income because you get paid cash under the table. That's called go to jail and get a boyfriend. Like it's not very much fun, <laughs> right? That's what I've heard. Like I've not been there. I don't want to go there. And so sure. what do you do? You listen to people that are smart, the, the academics, the strategists, you pay people, you have mentors, and you do the things the government wants you to do. The government is trying to create a flourishing society. And I have my own thoughts about some of their devious idiocy, but at the same time, they want to see things grow and thrive. I really do believe that people in power, that's their goal. They don't want to have a bunch of people that are just like, you know, out of work and just terribly, you know, terrible lives. So what are they going to try to do? They want you to flourish so society flourishes. And so they put these things in place to push you towards a certain thing. Being not paying taxes when you retire is a great strategy. It's not going to be there forever. It is one of those things where I think when they realize, especially the socialist of them, like AOC and Nancy Pelosi and these other morons, when they say, oh, the rich are getting richer, even though they are rich, when the other rich people are getting rich, like the conservative Republicans are getting rich because of the Roth, they're going to say, oh, let's cut that out. And so it's going to go away, I think, at some point, just as a way to take money and spread it around to get more votes. Yeah. Damien, is there anything that would create one to hurry up and roll over their retirement account to the EQRP other than the uh, limitation on the deadline around the CARES Act? So you want to get your money rolled over it for a couple of reasons. One, like if you have, let's say you have an IRA and you've invested in some real estate, that is a ticking time bomb. You could literally get, have a third of your profits taken out from underneath you because of something called UBIT tax. Yeah, right. Custodians won't tell you about this. And if they do, they kind of dance around the issue because they don't want to lose your fees and your money. So what will happen is if you end up having a property and that property gets sold, you're going to pay up to 37% tax on those profits. Brutal. The reason that you want to move your money and your assets from an IRA into an EQRP to get it out and in control is because you're exempt. In an EQRP, you have control. Like when I say you're in the driver's seat, you're in the driver's seat. You can do what you want. There's no UBIT tax. You're exempt from it. These rules and laws will likely change and evolve over time. What you don't want to do is say, well, I'll just get around to doing something later. You may not have a later. I mean, here's one example of that. The SECURE Act in December of 2019 eliminated something called the stretch IRA. And what that was, it was a way for people to have a retirement account and then somebody inherits it. And then that person that inherits it gets to grow it and spend it their whole life. I know what this is because I had my dad set one up before he died. So when I got, when I inherited this thing, wasn't a ton of money, but it, what it allows me to do, because it's a Roth account, it allows me to grow that and spend that the rest of my life. Anybody that did that before December 31st, 2019 has the ability to not pay taxes ever. And That's so like estate taxes and things like that, right? Uh, income tax on all of it. Like it's, okay. So like, let's say you inherited a 50 or a hundred thousand bucks. You could keep growing it. You could start spending it. You could be 25, 30 years old. You don't have to pay taxes. I mean, it's an amazing thing. What they said was, well, that's actually costing us a lot of money because all that money just keeps getting growing and not, there's no taxes. So they said, we're going to limit it to 10 years. So now, so this is what I'm saying. Anybody that already had one got grandfathered. Anybody that inherits one after January 1st, 2020, you've got 10 years and then you have to take all the money out and then it has to go back into the tax system. So whatever is available now is incredibly important to take advantage of and not procrastinate. Like you've got to be thinking about like being a war leader. War leaders don't have time to think and pontificate and theorize. Like they got bullets flying at them. Like you got to get real. Like this is a war. And in the middle of a pandemic, this is a war. There's a lot of stuff going on. You can't be sitting there thinking you're going to get run over by something. Yeah, certainly. And, you know, with the uncertainty in today's environment, it just makes you think that much more. When you mentioned, you know, going to your employer and requesting the 401k rollover into, say, a hypothetical EQRP, they may or may not let you do that. It makes you think twice about continuing to contribute to that 401k when you can't even get it out when the laws say, yes, you can, right? And somebody come into me and they said, well, my employer said I'm allowed to take $25,000 out, maybe 50. And I said, wait, that's their rule? And they said, yeah, because they can make it up. What the law said is anybody that has any impact from coronavirus can take up to $100,000 to go into your personal account. So when you go to an, your administrator of your plan, you're literally saying, hey, I need this money and change your damn plan. Like, this is my money. I need access to it. Some of them are so arrogant to think, well, if you still have a job, why would you need this money? Well, hey, like maybe they're my your financial advisor, right? Right. I mean, it's you just sometimes you have to push, and and that that actually may be the next step to go ask, and then maybe push a little bit. 
because it is your money. Keep that in mind. If somebody tells you, no, you're too stupid, which is what they're saying, you're too stupid, or we know better, you know what? They don't care more. It's your money. Is there any opportunity cost you see in doing a rollover? You know, lost opportunity of, you know, the 401k or the IRA? You know, there's going to be an argument that people say it's free money to have money that's matched. And you can still do that going forward. You could have money that's continued to match if you wanted to put more money in. I don't see the downside of being in control unless you're a reckless idiot. If you're going to go out there and take the money and go buy a Ferrari like I did in 2005, then perhaps (laughs) you should not take this money and do something stupid like that. Then again, you grow from these things that you do. And I think that that's one of the lost lessons that it doesn't necessarily matter if you make a mistake. It matters whether or not you get the lesson. So getting the money out, is there a downside? Is it a bad idea? I don't know. Even if you don't do something super productive, you're doing something. And just the problem is what we've been trained to do is just hang tight, wait, smoke a bunch of hopium. Like that's our plan. Hope is going to fix everything. And then we wake up and we're 55 or 60 years old and there's a million or $2 million. Well, what good does that do you if you don't have any skills? You're like Pee Wee Herman. You don't have any muscle and you're just sitting there flopping around in the wind with a bunch of money. And guess what? It's going to go away. I can't tell you how many times I've worked with people build up a million or $2 million and in their fifties, they get a hold of it and it's gone in two or three years. It's a lottery event because there's no skills. They haven't done anything. So I don't think it matters if you go and do something totally stupid, you're going to probably grow. Yeah. I think that's so important there. Damien, you know, if you go in and turn on the news today, they're talking about the CARES Act to this day right now, right? Any news channel you pick, but you're not hearing all of these things you're spelling out about the CARES Act. You know, you're hearing that Boeing's getting the bailout, American Airlines this, United that, $1,200 stimulus check round one, hypothesizing round two, but you don't get any of this information. Why is that? And why are some of the, even the other things like the EQRP not conventional? You think about what the media has become. It, back in the 50s and 60s, there were three channels. You got everybody watched those things and you actually got news. What we have now is we have an industry that's fighting with every other channel, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Netflix, everybody's fighting to get attention. So what are they going to do? They're going to make you mad and they're going to make you scared. And that's, and then you'll keep paying attention. So that's why if it bleeds, it leads. And if there's some scandal or something, it's why they focus on Trump because he's a promoter. I mean, he just is all sorts of entertainment. <laughs> so, I mean, it doesn't matter whether you love him or hate him. He's really good at sucking all the air out of the media. And so Why are we hearing those things? Because if they said, hey, you can get $200,000 out of your retirement account, people are like, okay, that's cool. What's on the other channel? Like it's not going to get, but if you hear them talking about the scandal of Boeing buying back their shares and now they can't pay, they they need the government bailout, the government's going to get in bed with them and buy their shares. Like when you hear that stuff, you're like, oh, I need to know more about this. Then I can get mad and I can scream and yell and be pissed. Well, so you just think about it. It's total manipulation to get you stuck to their thing so that you'll buy their stupid drugs with their pharmaceutical commercials. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's about the advertising and the revenue. These are for-profit businesses. This is not for the public good. I mean, the media, give me a break. It doesn't matter whether it's CNN or Fox or it doesn't make any difference. It's all a business. Yeah, right. And then you sit around being mad and you know worrying about these things that you can't control. And let's say like this September deadline for the loan or the yeah, loans or the disbursements, one of the two, I forget, pass you by, right? And then you didn't take advantage of something that you can control and could impact your life. That's the problem. We are getting, it's like, it's a red herring. We're being said, we're being told, go look over here. And then you're going to miss this other thing that's going on. Like one of the things that I did recently, I had a, a program with my accountant at ProVision and Tim and I were talking about the net operating loss carrybacks. And what that is, if you haven't heard of it, and if you haven't, or if you have, doesn't matter, keep paying attention because what Congress did is they said, we need to find more ways to get more money into people's pockets. And this, what this did is they said, if you have losses in 2019, even 2018 or 2020, so like this year, if you have losses, you can take those losses and apply those towards five years back. Meaning if you have losses in 2020, you could go back to 2015 and get the money you paid in taxes back in 2015. With, you basically take the losses and offset the income and now you can get the money back. So I had a friend of mine that was talking about this and she said, this is crazy. All these billionaires are getting all the money they paid in taxes. They already paid it. And I was like, I was laughing. And I thought, actually what that allows us to do is get money that we've paid in taxes and to go do things like hiring more people, which is exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to do this amended return from the money I paid in 2015. And I'm going to go take that money and hire more people. So it's actually a really good stimulus program. And yet you have these socialists that are yelling like, this is just for the rich. Hello, who hires everybody? The rich. (laughs) And I'm not rich. 
but I am hiring people. I want to be rich. So I'm working on being rich. And, yeah, right. and it's, and I think these things were in place on purpose to stimulate. In fact, I know it, it's a fact. That's what they're there for. You mentioned uh, talking with your CPA, Tim Gertz there at ProVision. I think you did a webinar with him. Is that right? That's right. We'll try to link that in the show notes for audience members to check out. I know there's a really good conversation you had with him. Damien, you know, we've talked several times on the podcast here. So we've fired our traditional lightning round questions at you. But maybe one thing I'd like to ask is, where do you get your news? You know, you're always very well informed. You're kind of my go-to guy for, you know, all this financial news. And you always kind of seem to know what's going on. Where does a guy like you get their news? You know, when most people go to sleep, I'm over there scouring. And so <laughs> no, in, in all seriousness, it's literally not looking at the channels. The channels, the mainstream channels, I look at them to see what kind of stuff they're manipulating. One of the things that you can do, regardless of what you're watching, is actually watch, check out the raw data. I think a lot of times we look at headlines or we look at sound bites and we don't actually look behind it. And here's how I figure out what's going on. I follow the money. Like I, it doesn't matter what you're thinking about, whether it's drugs or cures for things or the financial, the, whatever's happening in the financial world, just figure out where the money's flowing. And it'll tell you a lot about what's actually happening. Then you think about things like whether maybe it's Venezuela and you're thinking about, okay, well, what's happening in Venezuela? I hear the news and there's this very bad guy, Maduro. What's also in Venezuela? The world's largest oil reserves. Right. So do you think that that's neutral or do you think that we're sending military down to the Caribbean and special forces because there's a bad guy there? Like I always laugh and I go, well, follow the money. The money is driving the conversation and it might not be doing it obviously on the surface. It's doing it underneath. So just ask who's getting paid. It's a really fascinating thing. And then if you start poking around, you'll get different information than you'll see on the mainstream news because who owns the mainstream news? The people that are had the money and want more money. So they're not going to screw themselves. Right, right. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, sometimes I want to get to the bottom of some of these news stories myself and I'll think, okay, well, I'm going to dig into this CARES Act, for instance, right? And, you know, I'll just go read the bill and you find out it's 1,800 pages. And you're like, oh, well, no, I don't care that much, right? <laughs> like, I don't have time to read, you know, legislative bills of 1,800 pages with, you know, a lot of, you know, nonsense in there. But at the same time, you don't want to just get your news from, you know, a clearly biased source on channel 10 of your evening TV, right? Yeah, it's kind of funny when you think about this because what you just said, here's an interesting thing. Most of those bills, nobody in Congress even read. Like I, yeah. would, I would venture to say most people, especially whoever's in charge, whichever party's in charge, they typically don't, nowadays, they're not even letting the other side see the bill until like an hour before. This is very common. And so nobody really knows what's being passed. It was like Nancy Pelosi's favorite thing that she said or famous thing that she said, where she said, well, and with this really snarky smirk, she said, well, in order to figure out what's in the bill, we have to pass the bill. And this was the healthcare, Obamacare. And it was just the most arrogant, asinine thing. I, I was like, I can't believe she just said that. But there's this arrogance around, well, we know better for you what needs to be done. It's kind of like these people that say, well, you know what? The population should not have firearms. And yet they have private security details and big walls. I'm like, wait a second. So you're better? It's just a hypocrisy. And so I think, yeah, you're not going to read it. Neither did they. So who's reading it? The people that wrote it called lobbyists. Again, it. So it's, is there corruption? 100%. You want to know what's going on? Figure out where the money's flowing. I love it. Damien, you're always in the know. You're a guy I always like to turn to for stuff like this because you have a perspective like you've showed today on the show. You know, you actually are recently a new podcast host where you talk about not necessarily this exact topic, but some interesting stuff like this. So tell us about that. Here's the deal. We're all in a way, we all cheer on the underdogs and we all kind of are underdogs. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the elitist to ivory towers that have a hundred million dollars with the family office. That's not, this is the wrong podcast for those people, which is no, it's okay because most of us are not there. Most of us are actually out there trying to figure it out. And so the underdogs is us cheering for each other and working together as a tribe. It's figuring out and dismantling all the lies and really giving ourselves a chance with the truth and how to actually do things that are going to benefit us so that we can design a life versus having this default life that turns us into a slave because most of us have shackles on of some sort. My mission is to free a million people from a financial bondage, one shackle at a time. And that's the entire point. Have honest conversations, take action, treat this, this life sometimes as a war leader of your own life, like lead as if there's bullets flying. Because honestly, this is the only life we have and bullets are flying at you every day. If you just sit there and don't do anything, that's stupid. And so as an underdog, you know, you don't look at Rocky and say, oh yeah, he's going to beat Drago. He's going to beat the big Russian. If he just sits there and eats Twinkies, like he's hustling and we cheer him on because he's hurting and he's working. That's what we all have to do. 
And so financial underdogs is about us coming together and supporting each other, fighting not necessarily the Russian, but maybe the Russian. It's just fighting <laughs> the big nasty monster. It's like David versus Goliath. We are all working together to be free. And that's the point of the show. I've been listening to the podcast lately, Damien. I love it. That is the Financial Underdogs podcast. You can check it out probably where you're listening to this exact podcast out. We'll definitely link it in the show notes for you to pick up. Damien, if people want to learn more about the EQRP, maybe see if it's the right vehicle for them. What's the best resource? Where's the best place for them to go? Best thing to do is grab your phone, probably listening to it, or just, you know, you're holding it and text the word EQRP to 72,000. And I'll send you, it's an automated system that will send you a copy of my summation, 15 page cliff notes of the QRP book. So literally it's as simple as sending a text message, send the word EQRP to 72,000 and you'll get that. And then you'll have a direct line to me and the team. And if you want a copy of the book, just respond back to that text after you get the report and say, Hey, could you send me a book to this address? And we'll just send one out to you. So super simple text, the word EQRP to 72,000 and you will be enlightened. And then you can share too, because Ultimately, if you end up with this all, all this power and wealth and you're doing good and you're by yourself, it's a terrible existence. I've done it. It's better to share it and be wealthy with your friends and family and people you care about. So spread the news, spread the love. That's text the letters EQRP to the number 72,000, where you can get a 15-page cliff note of the books. If you're interested in exploring further, Damien will send you the physical book right here sitting behind me. I've done it myself. Great book, great resources. Great content. Damien, as always, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Jacob. I appreciate it. Everybody, thanks for listening. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thanks so much, Damien. Till next time, take care. You too. All right, that wraps up this week's episode with our guest, Damien Lupo. Hey, I hope you got so much value from that show. For all those resources we mentioned in today's show, you can find those in the show notes or you can simply text EQRP to the number 72,000 for that automated response from Damien's team. I've done it myself. Highly recommend you do it if you have not yet. For more information, resources, and to connect with me, the best place to do so is www.jacobayers.com. Until next week, engineer the lifestyle you want. You've been listening to the Real Estate Way to Wealth and Freedom podcast, providing you actionable content to build your real estate empire. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for personal advice. The opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All information